fouls, and Agumake will jump it up. Fouls will not even try and win the tip for Minnesota. As you see, she pokes it into the backcourt. Minnesota prefers to have the ball at the start of the second and the third quarter. Minnesota starting in man-to-man. -man. They will play primarily man defense. You see Rebecca Brunson allowing Candace Parker to catch up high. That was a deny that resulted in a backdoor in game one. In the corner, Beard. Hit her game winner at the buzzer from the corner. This time gets fouled by Augustus. And Elena Beard will shoot a pair. Well, Cheryl Reeve told us before game one, we are going to need Simone Augustus in this series. Cheryl Reeve, the all-time winningest coach in WNBA postseason history, said she had a long talk with Simone Augustus yesterday and basically told her, hey, you can't be a role player in this series. We need you to play like a star. Loves the matchup that she has. Especially because Simone Augustus has the ability to create her own offense, but she can post up. And in this matchup, she has a much smaller Christy Tolliver on her, can get her in the block. But this is not how Cheryl Reeve wanted to start the game. L.A. in game one was able to outscore Minnesota from the free throw line. That's an area that Minnesota usually dominates. L.A. was a plus 12 from the bench as well, despite using only two players off of it. Here's more. A quick look inside to Fouts. Brunson the extra feed. Augustus can't hit. Good position inside by Fouts. And another try for the Lynx. Whaling got the roll. And this crowd can sit as they see the first bucket go down. And more pesky on the inbound. Great energy by Minnesota right now. Nice deflection by Maya Moore. A good sign to start this game offensively. They want to get Sylvia Fowles touches, especially with Candace Parker guarding her. The double team will come, and Fowles is a capable passer out of it. Something the China Robinson outlined for us off the top of the show. And Sylvia Fowles spoke to Holly about his Carson. Got into the lane and finishes with the left hand. I think that's important for Essence Carson to get a score going to the basket. She has struggled mightily with her three-point shot in the playoffs and in the last few months of the regular season. Carson shot it at 43% before the Olympic break. Brunson too strong, but just 21% after. Agumake receives the downcourt feed from Tolliver and puts it home. That's another area where L.A. really excelled in game one. Was points in the paint, getting out in transition, uncontested layups. 11-6 advantage and fast break points in game one. Whalen, not that time. Fouls active and Brunson ends up with it. Here's Augustus. Off on the three, and this time Agumake with the ball. Every member of the LA starting five played in their first finals game in game one. Christy Tolliver said it felt like Christmas. comes in after a lot of jockeying with Carson and Brunson as we look back at that fast break bucket to Neko Gubike. Well, we've seen Neko Gubike be explosive on the offensive glass, but it's also running the floor. She's able to get out in front of everyone, a tremendous athlete who knows the right time to leak out in those situations. Beard got her hands on that. That's something you'll see a lot of deflections from the L.A. Sparks. And that's something that Minnesota usually takes pride in, something they take note of in, in the first half of game one. L.A. had 14 deflections to only four for Minnesota. And a whistle away from the ball. And I believe that's going to be on Candace Parker. And she's going to try and explain herself. But you know that. Augustus is throwing people. Okay, but Augustus is throwing people on the screen. Augustus is throwing people on the screen. You see Brian Agler trying to get his message across about Simone Augustus, and now a whistle will go the other way, and that is Simone Augustus. So Agler's words not falling on deaf ears, and it's number two on Simone Augustus. Simone Augustus trying to get around the screen. Kristen Tolliver beats her to the spot, and exactly what Brian Agler was talking about. Augustus stays in for the time being with two personals. Marcy. Trying to get past Moore, she does, just couldn't hit the layup. 
Here's Moore. The pull-up. He's good. Did not score the first half of game one. Had 18 in the second. You knew she wouldn't go quiet for the first two quarters tonight. I expect a monster game from Maya Moore just because of the results of game one. Parker thought about it. Moore averaged nearly 26 points a game in the semifinals. Parker fading away, couldn't get it to drop. Great defense by Rebecca Brunson on that possession, keeping herself between Parker and the basket, forcing a tough shot. More the lob denied by Parker. It'll stay with Minnesota, and here comes Gia Perkins in for Simone Augustus for the Lynx. Maya Moore, so dangerous in pull-up and transition. You know she can take the three. Good screen, too, by Rebecca Brunson to give her the space that she needed to get the shot up. Talking with Maya Moore today, she has a lot of confidence in her team in these situations. Such an experienced group, three titles in the last five years. Tolliver switched on Brunson, trying to get around her. Still eight to shoot, a Blumike nothing there. Carson, the ball fake, and a jumper, and that is huge for Essence Carson, who Brian Agler told us before the game, L.A. needs to hit shots. Yeah, without question, that Essence Carson is the team that they will, that Minnesota will help off of on that end of the floor. Carson was just one of eight from the floor, and 0-4 for three in game one. As Fowles finds Brunson, nice little big-to-big -big passing. Beard races all the way in. Extra feed, it's Carson. No. And now Perkins looking to push. More the hesitation and shovel, but just passed. Sylvia fouls out of bounds. Essence Carson today in shoot around was taking extra shots and extra shots. And when she made them, her teammate said, make them pay, make them pay because that's the player that you will see Minnesota help off of. On that play, Maya Moore helped off, double team. Carson had the time to shot off. Interestingly enough, when they were mimicking the opening introductions for Minnesota with the lights off well before the game today, Essence Carson was shooting in the dark, and she wasn't missing. Five to shoot. Tolliver will force it, and hit it. That is a difficult look from Christy Tolliver. That's what Christy Tolliver does. The defense can be all over her. She loves doing that one dribble to the left, escape dribble. Not much space she needs to get it off. The double comes, foul says, come on, the double is not working here. Beard wants help, finds it in Tolliver. No. Good pace to this game early. Each team four of nine from the floor. Fouls, he's gotten a lot of touches in this first quarter. This time, gets swatted by Parker. Carson lost it. Here's Whalen, through two. Can't get it to go, and a Gwumake the rebound. You sensing any exhaustion right now, running up and down the floor, not a lot of whistles. I'm not sensing it, I'm seeing it right before my eyes. This is what happens when there hasn't been a television timeout. Well, there will be soon, I assure will be you. Soon. A Gloom McKay misses wide left. Shelby's telling the team to push, they're looking at her like, come on, we're tired. Moore takes advantage. Except for the one player on the floor who probably never gets tired, that's my Moore. the whistle. Timeout on the floor, tied at 10 with 3.14 to go in this game. Where she said, I distinctly remember the doctor telling me you'll probably never play again. From overcoming that injury, fighting her way onto the Sparks roster and making a huge impact. Elena Beard, what a veteran making a move. And, and you know what, Holly, I think one of the more interesting comments after the game came from Cheryl Reeve. 
who said, you feel good for a player like Elena Beard having that moment. And they said, well, you know, you don't want it to happen against you. But that's how respected the game and the grit of Elena Beard is. She's worked so hard to get herself back physically. She's looked great all season long. There are times in the season where I thought she was the best defender in the league. Long arms, that's one of the reasons she's on Maya Moore. Fantastic on the defensive end. Perkins just raced to the spot and was able to beat the hedge of Jantel Lavender. Minnesota with the lead. Gia Perkins continuing to play well for Minnesota. On both ends of the floor, she usually comes in as a defensive player, but con continues to be consistent on the offensive end as well. Chelsea Gray into the game for LA as Beard can't hit Howard the box out. Chelsea Gray changes things on the offensive end for Los Angeles, putting Chrissy Tolliver at the two-guard spot. She's big and strong. Fouls a little too tall for Howard. Played more than 47 minutes in this series, and still neither team has led by more than five points at any point. Tolliver lays it up and gets the English. And that's a situation where Natasha Howard, in terms of her help defense, has to be there. Cheryl Reeve went over that a lot in practice today, talking to her team about helping one another on the defensive end. Cheryl Reeve also said, look, our bench laid an egg in game one. Whether it was Howard, Montgomery, or Cruz. The foul on Elena Beard as we look at that movement from Christy Tolliver. Well, Christy Tolliver does a really good job when she doesn't have the ball in her hands moving to continue to get it. And that's one of the keys LA said all of their players coming into the series. We have to continue to move and cut because they know Minnesota wants to deny the initial pass. It's now Howard, Montgomery, McCarville, and Perkins off the bench for Minnesota. Maya Moore stays out there from the starter. McCarville in the corner. She got it! A long two for Janelle McCarville as we check in with Holly Rowe. When you talk about the importance of Christy Tolliver, you know, in game one, there were times when we saw her kind of get disenchanted with some of her teammates. Talk a little bit with Candace Parker, and I asked Christy about it today at practice. She said, look, that look I get on my face, it might look not great to other people. It is intensity. I am a competitor, and as my coach said, we want to leave this series with no regrets. It doesn't matter what it looks like on the court. The score matters and what Christy Tolliver is able to contribute to her team. And Brian Agler also said, sometimes the look on Christy Tolliver's face doesn't match what's going on in her head. As Janelle McCarvel has come off the bench, stroke it. And Janelle McCarvel could be in the ballgame right now because Lavender's in the ballgame, and that's a good matchup for her defensively and what she can do on the offensive end. We've seen the last two possessions. Here's Beard flipping. Lavender, she got it. Jintel Lavender doesn't miss those. Great face-up game, especially for a big power player. The sixth woman of the year was an all-star as a starter last year for the Sparks. Here's Howard giving it up. Montgomery will fire. In and out. Howard active. And cleaning it up. If you're Los Angeles, you have to get a body on Natasha Howard. She is relentless in her pursuit of the basketball on the offensive end. Lavender fouled on the drive by McCarville. And that is going to be just the third team foul, first in the last two minutes for Minnesota. And you see tonight already, eight points from the Minnesota bench. They had eight all of game one. Yeah, they really struggled. And that's been a strength for Minnesota all season long. Cheryl Reeve goes deep into her bench. It's one of the reasons her starters are able to wear teams down late because they can get rest throughout the game. 12-4 Minnesota run. Beer, nothing there, and that is going to be a jump ball. What an impact Janelle McCarville has already had in these few minutes since she's been in the game. She had the one missed assignment on Jantel Lavender, but other than that, on the offensive end, she's made her shots. Nice defensive help there. Beard does have a 6'5 wingspan, very capable of winning this job. We know about that wingspan because Holly Rowe took out the tape measure and measured it this morning. Literally. McCarville slaps it back, and Kubike with four to shoot. In the corner, it's Tolliver. Off on the three, Parker has it stripped away, but out of bounds. Make that Lavender who had it knocked away, but I believe it was last touch by Minnesota. So now LA basketball with the shot clock turned off and six and a half on the game clock. 
this is a Minnesota second unit that's provided a burst of energy on the defensive end all season. We've seen it already since they've come in the game here, Ryan. L.A. held to just 14 points thus far in this first. Lavender will pop. No. Still time for Minnesota. One second left. Perkins heaves. Nearly banked it home. That is the end of quarter number one. Brian Two points from Neka Gourmike in that first quarter. Also, Candace Parker held off the scoreboard in that first. Minnesota's just brought really nice energy on the defensive end. It was LA controlling things defensively at the start of game one. Montgomery, no. Long rebound, Caroms to Gray. Minnesota now 0 of 8 from 3 thus far in these finals. Gray sees Lavender, quick pull, and Lavender not enough on it. We heard the China Robinson talk about this in the pregame. Chelsea Gray, with her vision, is able to see over, especially Minnesota's small guards off the bench. Cruz also struggled in game one, along with Montgomery off the bench for Minnesota. McCarville with space, gives it up, three to shoot, Cruz, you bet. And Minnesota's bench has already contributed more points and rebounds than they had all of game one. And this is the largest lead for either team thus far in these finals. So important because it's buying Lindsey Whalen more time on the bench to rest so she can have more of a burst of energy when she comes back in the game. Ray rumbles to the rim. Once again, Chelsea Gray with her size, her vision, her strength, able to get it inside. And then Minnesota turns it over on the other end as Lindsey Whalen and Simone Augustus will check in as Maya Moore. Someone else will have to leave with four. Rebecca, you can only play with five. And now they have Lindsey Whalen waiting a moment before coming in. Whalen thought it was her time. She instead will sit at the scorer's table. Everybody tap your hands. Ruba Kay trying to take it in on McCarville. Just owns her to the ring. You know, I thought that was a pretty good job by Janelle McCarville, though. She stayed between Ruba Kay and the basket, even though Ruba Kay is much quicker. But Neca finishes inside. One of the best finishers in this league. Led the league in points in the paint. It wasn't close. Had an 80-point lead on the second-place person and got away with a travel there. Anna Dabovic into the game for L.A. Did not play in game one, and a nice look to Abubike here in game two. A 6-0 response from L.A. as this game is tied at 20 and a timeout for Cheryl Reed. One of the reasons Neko Abubike is It's always important to know which one of your teammates are wearing the mic that night. Neka Gwumike has come alive here in this second quarter. Four points after a somewhat quiet first quarter and helping lead a 6-0 run for the Sparks. She continues to have great movement off of the ball on the offensive end. Augustus, no fouls, can't get to it. By the way, Gwumike and Parker, I think Gwumike was almost playing the role of me to you <laughs> around an open mic. I generally know when mine's open. Yeah since it's on my ears. <laughs> Augustus got that one. And there, finally, for Minnesota, some points in transition. Something easy for Simone Augustus. We talked about her struggles in game one. She's vitally important to this team's success. Just two of five with six points in game one. Also had four turnovers. Dobovich running the point right now for L.A. Dobovich pulls up. No. Brian Agler only played two players off of his bench in game one. He said he will need to go deeper here in game two. You're already seeing it. In the corner, it's Cruz. Does she get the roll? No. And Minnesota's still looking for its first three of these finals. They're 0 of 7 tonight. Beard. Not a ball movement, and that's what Brian Agler said was missing in quarter number one. Finally, it does move, and Lavender... Just missed an easy turnaround. Yeah, she has to make that. She had a much smaller Simone Augustus on her in the paint. Augustus trapped. Brunson put it on the floor. Whalen will pull. We saw that in the second quarter of game one as well, with Brian Adler looking more to trap off of on-ball screens, handoffs, that sort of thing. Minnesota did a nice job handling it there.
And that's a foul. The drive from Chelsea Gray. They gear up for the playoffs at WNBAstore.com with the best selection of jerseys, t-shirts, hoodies, and more. WNBAstore.com, one store, every team. Take your shot. Take your shot, okay? You're going in. And, listen, you're, you're just throwing the ball out for this. You can't do it. You've got to be sharp on your passes now, okay? Brian Agler providing some wisdom to Anna Dabovic, who has been in and out of the rotation this postseason, but last year averaged nearly 12 points a game in a three-game series against Minnesota. Two to shoot. Parker's going to have to heave it. She does and connects. Tough shot, but Sylvia Fowles defending Parker has to at least get a hand up to try and contest that jumper. They will look and make sure that that one got off in time from Parker. I mean, Ryan, look at this. Agler went too deep in game one. He has a lot of players. He's going deep into his bench already here. We take a look. Oh, I think it was after the shot clock went down, at least based on the zero. I think it was, too. They will take a look at that next chance they get. Sandrine Gruda, the other player off the bench you're referring to, did not play in game one. Augustus can't hit. Count inside by Rubike, who has six boards already. Minnesota, plus five on the glass in this game. Parker got loose. Extra feed into the front row. Minnesota doing a much better job defensively here in game two. They're not in the same kind of deny as they were in game one because L.A. really made them pay for that. Like getting the backdoor cuts as he looks inside. These two teams, the best two teams all season long. Minnesota 28-6, the one seed. L.A. 26-8, the two seed. Beating in the finals because of the new WNBA playoff format, which is not conference specific. As fouls will go to the line, and I believe that's going to be number two on Candace Park. I like the quick, strong move by Sylvia Fowles because the double team was coming, but she made the move before it could get there. First free throw attempts of the night for Minnesota. Now let's take a look at the upcoming playoff schedule. Game three will be Friday in L.A., 9 Eastern on ESPN2. Game four, if necessary, will be Sunday in Los Angeles, 8.30 Eastern on ESPN. And then game five would be back here in Minnesota on Thursday, October 20th, 8 Eastern on ESPN2. For more on these games, please go to WNBA.com or access the WNBA app. And games between teams that are as evenly matched as L.A. and Minnesota, things like missed free throws can be vitally important at the end of the game. Minnesota 0 for 2 now. L.A. is 1 for 4. Parker and Moore jockeying. Parker wanted it on Moore, a clear size advantage. Now she gets it. Crowded inside. Parker banks it home. And fired up after it. And that is a matchup that has concerned Cheryl Reed. Parker getting in the block on Maya Moore. Moore trying to respond. No. Every time her team gets the rebound, sprinting the floor. Parker, and that's going to be an offensive foul on Agumike. Her first. Eka Agumike is aggressive, and she gets out and gets the foul call, but here. Oof. Look at a chance to take one more look at it. No, we won't. Looks set. So, they know her third foul call in game one was a tough call as well. Here she just has to be smart. You don't want her picking up a second. She is guarding Maya Moore right now. Shot clock at seven. Fouls with Bruda on her. Kept the foot on the ground. Moore is alone. Tolliver helped off her, and that's not who you want to help off. It's like when you're with the best looking person at the dance, don't leave them. <laughs> Stay right there. Dance all night. Parker, no. Bruda, the offensive rebound. First three of the series for Minnesota as Bruda is having a lot of trouble coordinating on this offensive possession. But how about the defense for that time, Minnesota? We don't normally see them look so discombobulated on the defensive end of the floor. 
Fender. Fender was wide open. Moore to the rim. Too easy. Right around a group again. Nine points for Maya Moore. She is this game's leading scorer. Gray trying to turn the corner. Too strong. Through to the offensive rebound. In the corner, Gray will give it up. Parker wants it in the post, and not a good entry pass from Gray. Whaling on a nice delivery from Moore, but Tolliver stayed with it. And then trying to urge her team, let's go, let's go, after those turnovers. Great hustle that time by Chrissy Tolliver, clearly saving an easy two from Lindsey Whalen. On the other end of the floor, though, Chelsea Gray continues. You see her coming out of the game now. She continues to be able to go to her strong side, to her right side. That's something Cheryl Reeve worked on a ton in shoot-around today, wanting her team to force her left. They haven't been able to do so. L.A. has turned it over for their last five possessions. Fouls is going to get hit with an offensive foul. Neka Grumike drew the third most fouls in the WNBA this season. Michelle Reeve was telling her team this morning, especially big players on the block, when you get it, take it right up through the nose. I don't think she meant literally. <laughs> a great job by NECA to stand her ground and take the charge. Now, you guys don't know it? I believe. What a perfect time to have Neka Gwumike, Mike. <laughs> I'll still stick to my guys. I That's thought we pick. I shoot it. As a post player, I think that I was a basketball foul, not a favorite foul. Not to see anything unnecessary about it. Gwumike will shoot the free throw. 
and hit. So at least the basketball gods believe it was a flagrant one. Some confusion now as to how many free throws Akumake gets. Now it's clarified as she hits the second. And now it will be Los Angeles basketball side out of bounds. And you could hear Roy Gobain saying to Cheryl Reeve, who was claiming that there was a flop there from Neko Gumake. We looked at it about 15 times, Cheryl. Before the game anyway, it's not a flop if there's contact, it's an embellishment. That's right. Parker, Ralph Lane. Timeout on the floor. It's a tight game again. But Parker and Agumake have accounted for the last eight points for the Sparks after they combined for just two in the first four. Allen harassed by Beard, who just kicks it. And, and that's the perfect description. Anna Beard picking Lindsey Whalen up full court. Often, Minnesota will have somebody else bring the ball up just to avoid Elena Beard, one of the best perimeter defenders in the league. Let's check in with Holland. Well, that Minnesota timeout was very fired up. They were upset about how that flagrant one was upgraded. They feel like everything's against them right now. Lindsey Whalen firing her teammates up with some language I don't usually hear from her. And Cheryl Reeves saying, go after them. Attack, attack. They're settling for too many jump shots. We're going to go after them. Let's keep that fire trampled on the court. We shall see, Holly. Six to shoot here. Brunson on the attack. Lift it up and off. Fires it up. Yeah, some fire there. For Rebecca Brunson, who has played in more finals games than anybody in league history. She does so many things in an understated way. That drive and offensive rebound was not understated. Nice play by Brunson. Minnesota, a five-point lead. Parker's three. Way too long. Fouls, quick touch. Early offense. Fighting for it. Ends up with Brunson. Brunson pivoting. And a foul. And I believe that'll be Neka Grumake in her second. And Minnesota continuing to attack in the paint. Sylvia Fowles still went up strong, even though she got that foul called. And coming up on the WNBA Halftime Report presented by State Farm, the WNBA honors Cynthia Cooper as part of the 20 at 20 WNBA's greatest players, as well as a look back at one of the most memorable endings in WNBA Finals history. Game one, Sunday. That's right. It's already one of the most memorable endings. Yes, it is. Incredible game one and another tightly played game here tonight. Minnesota leading by six. Carson forcing her way, couldn't get it. Agumake screams in for the board and gets the foul called against Sylvia Fell. One of the things Brian Hagler was telling his team in shoot around today was we have to make Maya Moore defend. We can't let her just roam the paint and be an off-ball defender. Essence Carson has done that pretty well here in the first half. Now they call that foul on Maya Moore, not Sylvia Fowl, so that'll be her second. Agumake hits the free throw. Neka Gwomake, the MVP this season, third in scoring, third in rebounding, first in field goal percentage, eighth in blocks. That was so unbelievably efficient when she gets the ball inside. Justin needs to lay up the floor. Moore, she got it! The first score in double figures, she has 12. Largest lead of the series for either team, it's nine for Minnesota. A 12-3 run. Carson, no, more the box out. Links taking charge. Oh, what a feed!
Minnesota quarterback right here, Maya Moore. And Lindsey Whalen, look at the English on this. She is under the basket. Release is still able to get it to finish. One of the best at that. This crowd's feeling it like we didn't see in game one. That is an unbelievable one-handed downcourt feed from Maya Moore. A little bit of core strength it took to get that one down. And Whalen completes the three-point play. Cheryl Reeves said she thought early on her team would struggle, and she hoped during this game they would find their stride. They have found it late in this second on a 15-3 run. Tolliver looking to end it. No. Agwumake keeps it alive. Parker alone. No. Minnesota doing a great job in terms of their scout defensively going behind on, on ball screens and recovering beautifully. Perkins will pop. Fouls. A monster on the offensive foot. A 17 to 3 Minnesota run. A second and a half difference game in shot clocks. Well, they will let this one. Parker makes her move, dashes in, and it gets stuck by Fouts. Defensively, Minnesota is looking like the team we saw all season long. In game one, LA was able to dictate what they wanted to do. Cheryl Reeves says, not here in game two. Fouls, the defensive player of the year this season, three times in her career. Tolliver with two to shoot. Tolliver will he. Doesn't get it to go. Good fight from Beard. That'll do it for the first half. Minnesota ends the half on a 17 3 run. And Christy Tolliver hit with a technical foul. Augustus begins the second half with that free throw. L.A. with seven second quarter turnovers. They had just one first half steal. They had nine steals in the first half of game one. And immediately, Elena Beard is hit with a personal to open up the third. One down, stay stay. One down, arms stay to try stay. to disrupt Lindsey Whalen, but once again, you see, Blaine Beard was picking Lindsey Whalen up. Full court is going to make her work. Minnesota felt like they didn't do a good enough job in game one of getting the ball out of the hands of whoever Beard was guarding when bringing it up the floor as Beard just snatched it right away from Whalen. And then Whalen gets pummeled in the screen from Agumake. Beard slicing through the lane. Moore came with the help D. That's where Minnesota has been much better coming with that help D. But that's the second time we've seen that in this game from Maya Moore. Throwing it out of bounds. Those plays matter in championship games. You heard Maya joke with Holly at the half. It was good that she finally got one of those to work on the downcourt feed she threw to Lindsey Whalen. A beautiful pass. The highlight of this game was the about a 75 footer right in the arms of Whalen in stride for an end one as Agumake and Parker, little miscommunication going back door. And we did not no, see that you get the handoff or the pass. When they had she their back me. doors, they were in tune, Mecca and Candace were. Moore from the free throw line. No, but follows it up, keeps it alive to no avail. L.A. ball. The right decision. She caught the ball and she realized she couldn't get it to one of her own players. So, yes, throw it out of bounds instead of giving it to L.A. where they can get out in transition. What can the Sparks get against this Minnesota defense right now? I think he needs to involve Chrissy Tolliver in some pick and roll. She's the one player they're trying to fight over. And Rebecca Brunson has done a really nice job defensively against Candace Parker. Clock all the way down to five. Not much there, this possession for L.A. Parker 
Can't hit. And again, if the Evans Essence Carson is the one in the pick and roll, you can just go under. Augustus, yeah. She got it. And Brian Aguilar wants a timeout. Does not like the way this third quarter has started for his team. Minnesota's lead is 17. Taking game one on a buzzer beater from Elena Beard Sunday afternoon. And LA is a team that is not a good offensive rebounding team. They only have one second chance point in the entire game. They may need to start sending more bodies to the offensive glass the way they're shooting right now. Here comes Tolliver. Parker gets free into the corner. It's Beard. She got it. A long two for Elena Beard. Nice ball movement that time from the LA Sparks. Candace Parker to make the extra pass. Ends a near seven minute drought without a field goal for the Sparks. LA was third in offensive efficiency this year. Minnesota was first. Fowles has been a beast on the offensive glass all game. This time Parker hung with her. Then has it slapped away. Ball still loose. Minnesota ends up with it. Parker tried to put it down in traffic, and Minnesota knocked it away. But again, a turnover from Minnesota. Or is there a foul? Looks like a Gwumake is called for a hook there. Or it's going to be on Elena Beard instead. That's number three on Beard. And Cheryl Reeve continuing to encourage Sylvia Fowles. Doesn't matter if you miss some of those. Continue to attack. Take it at him. Get to the offensive glass. Fowles with only four points, but she has had a real impact in this game. She absolutely has. Keeping balls alive on the offensive end. Done a nice job defensively as well. Nine rebounds for her as Augustus drops in another. Seven points for Simone Augustus. Beard able to get the whistle. She will go to the strike. Pass number 32, Denver Brunson. Super personal first team foul. Simone Augustus, that's her spot. She loves shooting from the baseline. We did not see her engaged enough in game one on either end of the floor. Cheryl Reeve really talking to her a lot and challenging her in shoot around today. Seven points so far tonight at six all of game one as we check in with Holland. Well, that's right. Cheryl Reed told Simone Augustus, look, I am fixated on this matchup. You against Christy Tolliver. There's a significant size advantage for Simone Augustus. They can post Tolliver up, take her outside. And she said, look, Simone, if you're not going to be present, if you're not going to be engaged and want the rock, then I'm going to move to another matchup. And Simone said, no, I accept the challenge. She said, Cheryl is so hard on me, but I love it because it means she cares and she wants the best out of me, just like my dad. Tolliver can't hit, that's off whale. An interesting decision by Cheryl Reeve, too, to begin this third quarter. She had Simone Augustus shoot the technical foul. Maybe try to get her in rhythm. An excellent free throw shooter, but there's a lot to choose from there for Cheryl Reeve. And what has Augustus done? Well, she's hit her two jumpers since. She absolutely knows that she needs to win not only this game, but this series for Simone Augustus to be engaged on the offensive end of the floor. Beard will pop again and connect. A three for Elena Beard. That's a situation where Simone Augustus needed to at least have her hand up to contest Elena Beard. Beard 34% from three this season, 34% in her career. Moore, a high dribble, didn't really have the handle because of it. LA looking to run. A Kubike up the floor. And it's cut to 10. Sylvia Fowles is laboring. She is tired. She did not even cross half court when Agumake made it across to get the layup. Needed timeout. Once down 17, it's now a 10-point game thanks to a 7-0 run. Hey, tonight at 10 p.m. Eastern on ESPN, the undefeated presents a conversation with the president. Sports, race, and achievement. Stan Barrett joins President Obama for a one-hour student's forum regarding race, the role colleges and universities play, as well as social activism among athletes. Tonight at 10 Eastern on ESPN and streaming live on the ESPN app. And watch ESPN. 7-0 run from L.A. The deficit now is 10. Minnesota down 1-0 in this best of five WNBA final series. Brunson denied, and Parker took it away. Carson back it up. They had some numbers there for a moment, but couldn't quite find their spacing. Beard on the drive all the way in, just missed the layup. 
Beard has been significant in this run for Los Angeles on the offensive end. She is looking to attack in her jumpers. Whalen using the screen from Brunson. Augustus, not that time. Parker poked the rebound away from Carson. Carson trying to chase it down. She does. Parker alone for two. This is the activity that we saw on the defensive end in game one for Los Angeles. They can wreak havoc. They are long. Their hands are active. They can disrupt things. Just the second bucket for Candace Parker. Brunson can't hit. She has to be able to hit that shot. Candace Parker was nowhere near her defensively. L.A. on a 9-0 run. Tolliver. You bet. Christy Tolliver fired up, and so is that L.A. bench. The one thing you know is that Christy Tolliver taking one dribble left. It's like a rhythm dribble at times. It gets her into her shot. 12-0 Sparks run, and this Lynx crowd trying to encourage their team. Fouls putting it on the floor. Parker the denial. And now a whistle, and the foul will go against who? Elena Beard is in pain. I think the foul's on L.A. And it is on Elena Beard, her fourth personal. Third team foul on L.A. In this third quarter, and Elena Beard a little shaken up. We've seen how important Elena Beard is to the L.A. Spark. Applying the defensive pressure, she had the huge defensive plays leading to the game winner in game one. Oh, she got knocked right in the right side of the face by Rebecca Brunson's elbow. For the time being, that was called a personal on Elena Beard. But the only thing the officials... for her ear, but for her foul situation, she'll go to the bench. And as Rebecca mentioned, she's played some really key minutes to help get L.A. back in this game on this 12-0 run. On a cruise in along with Natasha Howard, Gia Perkins from Minnesota, with fouls and more. Or denied by Carson, flags it down, heaves it up. Long rebound and Gray secures. Carson ahead to Parker. To the rim for two, and L.A. has cut it to 
three. LA's post players have done a tremendous job of running the floor, getting out in front of the defense, and scoring easy buckets. And if Soda, meanwhile, has not scored in the last three minutes. 14 0 run. Essence Carson's had something to do with that as well. She's played nice defense on Maya Moore. Two offensive rebounds, and the second results in an and one. First it was Moore, and then Fat. Jolie has to be thrilled with her team's presence on the offensive glass. The second chance points have really benefited her team here in this game. We continue to see Sylvia Fowles attack. First, Maya Moore keeps it alive, then Fowles inside. Great energy by the Minnesota Lynx. There's a 12-4 advantage in second chance points for Minnesota. Fowles completes the three-point play. The lead back to six as they end the 14-0 LA run. Chelsea Gray, Christian Tolliver, Essence Sparks, and Echo Gwubike. Candace Parker on the floor for the Sparks. Here's a Gwubike isolated on fouls, denied by her. Carson can't hit. Gotta pass that into Candace Parker. She was begging for the ball off the block. Cruz, no, and if Rubike trying to slap the rebound off of Minnesota, slapped it out of bounds. Just run it for you. Okay, she's got to, she's got to run Hey, hey, move on. Here, Candace Parker calling an offensive play. Brian Angler told us this morning he will go stretches of a game where he does not call the offense. He wants his team to run what they feel is the right thing to run. Here's Moore. Poked by Tolliver. Tend to shoot. Moore's crossover. High roll. And the drop. That's a sign that things are going well for you. If you can get it to hit off the back rim like that and still go in. It's one where if you're a Sparks fan, you wonder, is it all night? Carson couldn't finish. Good help there by Howard. Much to better defensive help by Minnesota here in game two. Now, underneath the hoop, a foul called on Neka Gulmake or Sylvia Fowles? Oh, It'll be on Sylvia Fowles. Sylvia Fowles running the floor, gets inside. That's a tough call to me. Sylvia Fowles should be able to post up strong. I would almost have my feet in there, frankly, Ryan. at home. Good fight there on the offensive glass, but Howard runs away with it. More patient. You bet. Maya Moore from three. It's an 8-0 Minnesota response. Deer got the step to her left hand, just blew the layup, but a Grubike there to try and clean it up and draw the foul. Great job by a woman game trying to make something out of nothing. But in these situations where Minnesota has made a run, if you're Candace Parker, you have to touch Howard on you. Post up. Parker is able to overpower Howard. Free throw has been a bit of an issue for LA. They're just six of eleven. Chantel Lavender checks in. The Sparks went on a 14-0 run. Cut a 17-point deficit down to three. Minnesota on an 8-0 run since that just ended on that free throw from Necker. Candace Porter with six points on three of ten shooting in this game. Minnesota's done a nice job on her. Cruz deflected by a Gulbuke in the steal, but Howard heads up, puts it back to her team. Moore underneath. Ball kicked all which ways and out of bounds off of the foot of Cruz back to L.A. in a chaotic sequence.
Well, Maya Moore fooled most people in the building, building including Natasha Howard, who thought she was going to shoot, was already in rebounding position, but instead, Maya made the pass, and Howard Everybody couldn't rebound. I think Maya would have shot if she had come through the gather. If she had had balance, yes, absolutely. Gray. Deflected. Here's Moore. Knocked away by Gray. This team's having trouble holding on to the basketball last few possessions. Because both teams defensively have very active hands and they're able to disrupt things. The number one and number two teams defensively this year, according to efficiency. Howard was open on the block. Fouls didn't see her. Perkins says, don't worry, I got you. Gia Perkins, new to the Minnesota Lynx this year, but she's a veteran, and she has played like one so far in these finals. 12-point Minnesota lead. Deep seal from Lavender, and a nice delivery from Ogrumike. Becca Ogrumike is a terrific passer and a terrific high-low passer, and you saw it there. Into the 10-1 run for Minnesota. Howard. Darts in, denied by Agumake, saved to Moore, high arcing, and off. Two for one opportunity, but LA would have to pull quickly. Doesn't look like they will. Your jumper is good. Minnesota can essentially hold for one, about a six tenths of a second difference between the game and shot clock. Cruz makes a move. Cruz from 12. Too strong. Agumake the board. The heave from Gray is well short. The LA Sparks able to carve a little bit into Cheryl Reeves' lead. Minnesota led by 14 at the half. It's down to eight. Well, Cheryl Reeve, the all-time winningest coach in playoff history, knows that these two teams are very evenly matched, that this series will end up coming down to players making plays because there's no real distinct advantages. Gray bodies in, and she just worked well into the block. And once again, a situation where Gray is able to go to her strong hand to the right side, and help cannot be there because LA has great floor balance, offensive players spread along the perimeter. Now, Whalen harassed by Beard, having trouble getting into the arms of Perkins. Perkins deflections from LA. Perkins tripped by Lavender after she split the deal. First foul on Jantel Lavender. How does Minnesota close this game? Well, I think it starts on the defensive end of the floor. They really have to take away what LA wants to do. First of all, get back in defensive transition, as Cheryl Reed was talking about. And they have to have the same help side defense that we saw from them in the first half. Perkins, seven to shoot. Augustus, working inside, floats it up and in. Plus the foul for the savvy bet, Simone Augustus. Simone Augustus, we've seen her time and time again in her career. Her ability to dribble penetrate, she usually likes to pull up this time all the way in, finishing with contact. Her teammate Lindsay Whalen usually thrives on getting the end one. Augustus can't complete it, runs some fighting, rebound grabbed by Beer. Here's Beer corralling through the lane for the bucket and the foul. Two possessions in a row, LA has had success attacking Lindsay Whalen. First it was Chelsea Gray, and then this time Whalen was in Beer. Gets through the screen, but nice job. She cradles the ball like a running back, finishes and again to her strong side. She's left-handed. Do you feel that sometimes in professional basketball, defenders forget about lefties being lefties because they face so many righties? And especially when the previous possession you're on Chelsea Gray and the whole mentality is force her left, force her left, and then you get on the lefty and you might still be thinking force her left. Here completes the three-point play, and Gus is trying to call a timeout. Instead, it's going to be a jump ball. So what's happening? LA defensively is making Minnesota unfair.
comfortable on the offensive end, and that's what we saw throughout the course of Game 1. Minnesota uncomfortable. Sylvia fouls in for Janelle McCarville. So now it's Perkins fouls, Whalen Brunson, and Augustus. Gia Perkins in there buys Maya Moore. A little bit more time on the bench, a little more rest before the final push. Gray and Augustus to jump. And it ends up with LA. Bryce got caught right in the middle of the action. He was ducking for cover. Parker turns the corner. Stuck by Brunson. And Parker was shot. She didn't get a whistle. And Minnesota had to make a big play like that because there's no help defense here. Good screen by Tolliver. There's no one there if Parker gets past Rebecca Brunson. Inbound to Lavender. Tolliver. Beard? No. But Elena Beard has been very confident, especially in this second half. She has 13 points leading all Sparks scores. She started them on the run. When they really made that push, it was because of Elena Beard's presence on the offensive end. 14 0 run took a 17 point deficit down to three in the third. Minnesota responded with a 10 1 dash. And the teams have been jockeying back and forth ever since. Moore got the whistle. That's foul number five on Elena Beard. My Moore is so good at that. We saw her do it in game one against Essence Carson. We've seen her do it throughout the course of the season right here. Shoulder fake. The player goes up in the air. Just as important as a chance to get the points is the foul on Elena Beard. She has been an enormous part of LA's coming back in this game, as Rebecca has talked about it. Now Beard is going to be out of the game with her fifth foul. Essence Carson, Neko Brumake in. Lavender will follow Beard to the bench. The person who's happiest about Beard going out is Lindsay Whalen. She might get a little chance to relax bringing the ball up the floor now. I have more fall tonight, the greatest challenge of the season for us. Relishing this opportunity. The three-time champion has 19 points and seven rebounds. He's all scored. Tolliver has space. Can't hit. And more fouled by Agumake going over the back. And instead, it's foul number four on Neka Gumake. You can see that conversation between Candace Parker and Neka Gumake after the play. Their relationship has really developed. A lot of good chemistry on and off the floor with them. As Tolliver gets in with a foul, and the bucket goes down for Simone. That is the matchup that Cheryl Reed pointed to. Coming into this series, she felt like Simone Augustus had the size advantage, the offensive advantage against Christy Tolliver. Simone Augustus does not get fired up often, but she's fired up now. And LA is already over the limit. So Minnesota in the bonus with nearly eight minutes to go in this fourth quarter, leading by 10. Free throws the rest of the way for Cheryl Reeves' team. Links lead back to double digits. Oliver on a poor pass from Carson never got to her. Augustus. Not that time. Fouls cleaning it up. possession Minnesota making LSU proud the grad Simone Augustus doing it and then foul I am here tonight I am going to do what I normally do you don't have to do anything other than the things you've been doing all season Minnesota leads by 12 trying to even up this best of five finals and Augustus gets it with a personal Augustus, a good size matchup against Chelsea Gray. Two guards with size, but Chelsea Gray has the strength. And she gets inside, gets Augustus off her feet. After Augustus came down, it looked like it was clean, but you called it one way with Maya Moore. I think it's a consistent call at this end of the floor. 
taking a look at the upcoming playoff schedule. Game three will be Friday in Los Angeles, 9 o'clock Eastern on ESPN2. Game four will be Sunday in L.A., should there be a game four, 8.30 Eastern on ESPN. And if there's a game five, it will be Thursday, October 20th, back here in Minnesota at 8 Eastern on ESPN2. For more on these games, please go to WNBA.com or access WNBA app. L.A. trail by as many as 17 this second half, cut it to three. And Minnesota bumped it back up to 11. L.A. cut it back down to five, but the Lynx have been doing work in this fourth, and Simone Augustus has been at the heart of it. 14 for Augustus, who was held to six in game one. Carson kept her left foot on the ground. Crowd wanted it up and down, but she clearly kept that left foot down. You know how hard it is to make a shot after you've just done that? Nice regaining of her balance by Carson. And now Brunson gets tripped, and I believe that's a Gwumake, and that would be her fifth. Number 30, Minnesota has had terrific movement on the offensive end. We saw the last possession where Sylvia Fowles got it, and then the cut from Simone Augustus. This time, Brunson good movement. It's so much harder to defend against the players who are constantly moving. That guy's like, don't take me out. Don't take me out. I'm good. Brunson to the line. Rebecca Brunson. The all-time leading rebounder in finals history. He's first in finals minutes and games played. Second in blocks. Seeking will be a record fifth title as Neko Kumake is not going to have her wish heard by Brian Adler, who sees too much time on the clock to leave a star out there with five pounds. Gray gives it up. Lavender can't put it down. Lavender has missed quite a few good looks for her tonight. She's now two of six from the floor. Brunson fouled Parker as she tried to snare. And it's going to be the third team foul against Minnesota. Second on Rebecca Brunson. I like tonight how Minnesota has really looked to get the ball into Sylvia Fowles. They know no matter who is guarding her, Fowles has the size and strength advantage, and they are trying to at least look at her every time down the floor. Fowles with 12 rebounds tonight, now 25 in this series. Lavender just took a tumble. Back to her feet. Maybe it was a deke. Didn't work out though. LA gets it back. There's Beard playing with five fouls as well. Great activity once again by Elena Beard, saving another possession. Lavender? No, not even close. Moore with fouls running all the way in for two. Another double double for Sylvia Fowles. Tolliver trying to respond. Wedged right. Look at the activity there from Beard. But no fruit at the end of that labor. One thing that happens when a big takes a perimeter shot, the person defending her can leak out, and that's what Sylvia Fowles did. Fingertips right at the rim. Neka Gwumake back in after three straight misses from Chantel Lavender. Straight up, straight up. Got you right here. Right here. Come on, come on, come on. Come on, come on. Communication defensively from the McCain, and ends up with a steal. The key to effective defense, especially in pick and roll situations, is communicating. In the corner, Beard run off the line in the spot she hit the game winner in game one. Decides to dribble in and find a Gwumake. That's a good decision when you have one of the best shot blockers in the league hawking you. Gwumake, 14 points, 11 rebounds. She's taking just six field goal attempts. Back door, more blocked from behind by Parker. And now a steal. LA hanging around. Down 11, 420 to go. Oh, and that was a good look from Christy Tolliver. 
but the limited field goal attempt by Neka Obumake. Minnesota has done a great job defensively, hawking her, not letting her get the touches in the paint, which is where she's so successful. Minnesota will take a timeout, 4-0-1 to go. The Lynx, the defending champs, are looking to even up this series at a game apiece. My lenses have a sunset mode and an early morning mode and a partly sunny mode. And then outside, it's a clear inside mode. Transition Signature Adaptive Lenses now have Chromia 7 technology, making them more responsive than ever to changing light. So life can look more vivid and vibrant. Why settle for a lens with just one mode? Experience light well lit. Upgrade your lenses to Transition Signature. Visit your vision source doctor and start living a life well lit with Transition's lenses. Simone Augustus in game one, limited to six points, but she has come alive, especially in the second half here tonight for Minnesota. She loves going left as the pull-up going, the and one going. Simone Augustus has been engaged and aggressive and fired up. And that's the Simone Augustus that Cheryl Reeves' team needs. Simone Augustus challenged by Cheryl Reeves today in that shoot-around is Holly detailed for us. She is 10th all-time in playoff scoring, third all-time in final scoring. And has gotten it done so far tonight. Augustus, not that time, fouls active, but L.A. comes away with it. The Sparks need stops and buckets right now, trailing by 11. They can't get the bucket as Beer just blew the buddy. often see that, although she went to the weak hand and could not finish. Whalen's jumper, in and out, Agumake battles for the rebound, her 12. Gray charging forward, flips it up and gets the whistle. What LA wants to see. Stop one end, forcing pace the other way. Chelsea Gray continues to do a good it doesn't job. Matter. We need you. We can help her. We can't. We, who's going to guard fouls down there? Who do you want on her? Nothing now. We're man to man. Okay. That was one possession. <laughs> Mecca Gurbake playing with five fouls. So is Elena Beard. And Gray misses the free throw. Hey, tonight after Stan Barrett and President Obama finish up, catch Sports Center at night with Bucci and Anderson. We'll have all the latest on the MLB Division Series as well as highlights from the NBA preseason. Sports Center at night on ESPN. Also streaming live on the ESPN app and watch ESPN. You were enjoying some baseball last night. Yes. Hopewell Junction's own Joe Panic with the walk-off hit in the 13th inning. Late game, Christy Tolliver was up watching and she's a Cubs fan. Augustus, no, rebound batted out, Beard flags it down. Here's Tolliver, thought about it, Beard scoops it up. In the corner, it's Gray. No. And LA's had some chances here these last few possessions but not able to cash in really after stop. What Minnesota has done really well is clog up the middle and not let allow any layups like they did in game one, but at the same time recovering to shooters. Help and recover. Give and go. That could prove to be the dagger. LA, three of 18 from three in this game. As Tolliver whirly burns it up and all. This is a sports team that led the WNBA 38% from three. Brunson it for two. And the foul. And also the exclamation point. Timeout on the floor. Minnesota looking to even up this series. to the basket, found herself free. We have not seen that here in game two. The shot she's taken have been from the perimeter, the one she's made up in the top of the basket. I think Minnesota's done a terrific job defensively against her. Beer kicks it out to Carson lining up the three. No, L.A. has just been iced from three. Three of 19. WNBA, 
a percentage this season that is a big part of what they do. Not only the points, but spreading the floor for their bigs. 38% on the year. Well, they pitched 12 of their last 14 shots overall and more. And it's more for cosmetic pleasure. Parker. Uh-huh. Carson puts it home. Carson. So the Minnesota Lynx had won 19 straight playoff games when leading going into the fourth quarter. That ended Sunday with L.A. won on Elena Beard's buzzer beard. But in this game, they have taken control and started a new streak. Minnesota has gotten nice contributions on the offensive end of the floor from a variety of players and players who are going to need to continue to play big throughout the course of the final. Simone Augusta, Sylvia Fowles, Maya Moore are all key for Minnesota. You knew the defending champs seeking their first repeat and their fourth title in the last six years would fight back. And they have done that here in game two. Their starters will head to the bench. And we will step to the side with the Lynx 33 seconds away from a win. Minnesota empties out the bench, leading by 17 with 33.4 seconds remaining. And L.A. will send their stars to the bench as well. Strong response tonight from the Minnesota Lynx after dropping a heartbreaker at home in game one. And that's what you would expect with a team that has the championship championship experience that the Minnesota Lynx have. I'm eager to see the adjustments these coaches are going to make between games two and three. John Waters was the only player on the L.A. roster who had ever played in the finals before this series. Minnesota's roster littered with red. Well, no one in this arena surprised the Minnesota Lynx do what they do, and in this case, it's fight back. The 2016 WNBA Finals are even and a game apiece. Minnesota takes game two, 79 to 60. 21 points, 12 boards from Maya Moore. Parker held to just six points on three of 12 shooting. A big game from Sylvia Fowles, who was established early, 13 points and 15 boards. It's the biggest change in this game. Simone Augustus, quiet in game one, 14 points in game two. As we 